All right, guys, welcome to your 12th Ruby tutorial. And in this lesson, I want to talk to you guys more about methods and some more things about variables. So the first thing that I want to teach you guys is this. You know how I said that anytime you want to make a method, you pretty much make a class, and then you put your methods and attributes inside that class? Well, that's true. You can make them that way, but you can also make methods that don't belong to any class. Let me go ahead and give you an example. So we first opened up our interactive Ruby and we don't have any classes created yet. And I'm going to go ahead and make a method called crap or something classy like that. Now my method's job is just to print something out on the screen. Um, something, you know, very formal like I am a crappy crap crap explanation point. And I'm just going to go ahead and end the method. Now our method returns nil, which pretty much means no errors. You created a successful method. Now, remember last time, whenever we created a class, I told you guys that you need to make an object to access the things inside the class, and then with your object, you can go ahead and call those methods. Well, the thing is, this method doesn't belong to any class, so how do we access it? In other words, how do we use it? Formally, how do we call it? Calling is pretty much the same thing as using, but that's what programmers say using methods. So in order to call this method, the only thing we need to do is type the name of the method. Simple enough, go ahead and hit enter, and it says, I am a crappy crap crap. See, I am so unprofessional, and <laughs> that's why a lot of schools don't use my tutorials, because I'm just incredibly immature. So I just want to mention that anytime you want to make a method that doesn't belong to any class, that's how you create it, and that's how you call it, just by typing the name of the method. Now, before I let you guys go, I want to talk to you guys a little bit more about variables, specifically naming variables. Now, I already told you guys that you can make a variable by giving a variable name, such as beans, and setting it equal to a value like 20, my favorite number. But you just can't name it anything you want. There are a couple of conventions on how to name variables. First of all, you can't have spaces. You can't have something like doghouse equals 14. It has to be all one string, basically. No spaces or anything like that. So just remember that. Another thing is, it must start with a letter or an underscore. So for example, beans would be good, or underscore bucky. But something like 3x, this doesn't start with a letter or an underscore. 3x starts with a number, so if you try to make a variable called 3x and set equal to 5, you're going to get an error whenever you do this as well. Another thing is, your variable name must only contain letters, numbers, and underscores. So you can't have something like Bucky and then a bunch of weird symbols and set it equal to 99 or 999. You're going to get an error because, like I said, this dollar sign, percent, caret, ampersand, those are symbols and you can't have those in the variable name. Another thing is, Variables are case sensitive. So for example, if you have B and you set it equal to five and you have uppercase B and you set it equal to, um, I don't know, like 64, whenever you type B, lowercase B is equal to five and uppercase B is equal to uh, 64. Two different variable names, lowercase and uppercase, two different values. So just remember that. So before I start going into more about variables and expressions and how you can assign the value of variables to other variables, I'm going to let you guys soak in this knowledge. So for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.